Hi everyone, I'm Rhonda Woolhouse. I'm a librarian here with the San Antonio Public Library. Uh, we have two other librarians here that uh, are helping us with this program, uh, Vicki Villalobos and Cynthia De Leon. Um, it was actually Vicki's idea to have this class, so thank you very much to her for coming up with this wonderful idea. Um, our presenter today is Leslie Winokur. Thank you so much Hello. for joining us and so much for agreeing to do this. Thank you so much. Good morning, and I'm so pleased that there are so many people interested in calligraphy. I've been doing this since 1997 when I discovered the Calligraphy Guild in San Antonio, and um, I can tell you it's, it's, I've never looked back. It's just been great, great fun. Um, and I will plug right now the San Antonio Calligraphers Guild, and um, you can find us online, sanantoniocalligraphy.com. And um, we always welcome new members. We'd love to have you. So if you're interested, check us out, check out our website and come join a meeting. It'll be a lot of fun. We meet the first Thursday of every month um, and we have a little mini workshop on the third Thursday of every month. So there's a lot going on there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen as I talk so that you all can see what I'm doing and make sure I've got everything right here. Okay, so everybody has pencil and paper and the brush marker and um, that's really all you need. And um, I wanna get out of all this so that I can be in full screen. there okay um as rhonda said if you have a question just shout it out that's fine with me i prefer that to feeling like i'm talking to outer space somewhere where no sound comes back so um don't worry about that but do mute if you have you know a yippy dog a crying baby a husband who likes the tv to be really loud whatever um so again thank you all for being here I hope you're gonna be as excited about calligraphy as I am. Um, let's start with a pencil and a piece of paper. And can everybody see what I'm doing okay? I can see it. Okay. So yes. when you use a pencil, let's um, make a mark, just one straight mark down. And you can see that that mark has pretty much equal thickness, top to bottom. And if you take that pencil and you press harder, you get a thicker mark, not just darker, but thicker. And if you don't press very hard, you get a line that's lighter and also thinner. Can you all see that? So if I take my pencil and I go pressure and then no pressure and then pressure, I get a mark something like that. And that's the kind of move we want to make when we use a brush, okay? So that what we'll end up with when we use a thicker tool is we'll end up with a mark that looks something like this. It'll be a little thicker at the beginning and the end and a little thinner in the middle. And that's just a more graceful mark than something that looks like this that's just solid equal thickness top to bottom, okay? So at this point, if you take your brush, I'm gonna start with this one. This is the brush marker that you have. It says Heathrone on it, H-E-T-H-R-O-N-E. -E. On one end, it has a brush. On the other end, 
it has a, a pointed bullet tip marker that's pretty fine. Okay, so close up that bullet marker and use the brush. When we use a brush, we want to point the brush as much as we can at the line we want to make. So I'm going to point it this way to make this straight line down. So if I go like this, I get a mark like that. If I do it this way, like you would normally hold a pencil, I'll get something like this, but I won't have as much control. Oh, excuse me one second. I knew it. <laughs> Hello. I was explaining to Rhonda a minute ago that um, I have a man delivering an oven at nine o'clock this morning and he just showed up, of course. I'm going to step okay. out in one second. But right now, let me just say what you want to do is try to do pressure and then less pressure and then more pressure. And at the end, you want to flip back up into the mark. Okay, so you're going to go press down less more. Okay, and that's the first stroke we're going to practice. You can do that in both directions. So if I want to go across, I'm going to go press, less press, press. Okay, press across and come back in a little bit gives you a nicer mark at the end, okay? We can practice um, that for a minute if you need to go answer your door. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run to the door in one second. The other thing I want to show you real quickly is you can take the brush and hold it more vertically with your hand. You see how that is? Rather than back here in the crook of my thumb and my hand, I can point it up closer to the knuckle here, and then I can make very thin straight lines and you want them to go up and down. Now this is a brush that I've been using and I let my granddaughters use briefly one day. It's very mushy on the end. This brush is brand new. Nobody's used it yet. And if I make a thin line with this brush, you can already see the difference in the line that I can make and in the control I can get. So if you have, hopefully you all have a brand new brush that you have not yet played around with too much <laughs> and practice these marks for three minutes while I run and let my oven in the front door. I'll be right back. I admire Leslie's um, belief in us and our restraint. <laughs> uh, uh, indeed. And isn't it always the way that when you're counting on them to deliver something, they come a bit late. Um, I was going to ask real quick too, while everybody's practicing, has anybody here actually done calligraphy before? Oh, a million years ago when I was in high school, I used to be able to do it and hmm. not anywhere near anymore. <laughs> Wait, like, a, did you take it as an elective? Was that a uh, class? My journalism teacher taught me back then. And so I learned from then. And so I ended up using it to write out all of my wedding invitations and that was the last time I used it and we're going on 20 years so it's been a while. Yeah. Has anybody else tried it before? I have not. Cool so good. I don't feel like such a beginner then. <laughs> I was like I'm gonna be the only one that doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, I haven't either Rhonda that's like the whole point of this is to learn something Listen, everybody has to start at the beginning, guys. Thank you for letting me run out. Um, not only does everybody have to start at the beginning, but everybody has to practice. We have a teacher who says, time on task. That's the key to anything you want to do well. 
okay? If you do this today and you don't pick up a pen or a brush for six months, you won't feel as comfortable and you won't feel as successful as someone who's picking up that brush every day while they watch TV and just doodling with it, okay? It's all about getting comfortable with things. <clears throat> we have variables in calligraphy, right? One of them is the tool, right? That's today, that's our brush marker, okay? The other is the fluid, which is ink or paint. The other is the paper, which can have a very smooth surface or not, and you get different results with different papers. And the final thing is the artist, right? And our natural inclination when something doesn't work right is to say, oh man, I really screwed up, I'm no good at this. It's not usually you. It's usually the fault of the tool or the fluid or the tool on a particular kind of paper or the fluid on a particular kind of paper. There's a paper that we love called Arches Text Wove. It costs five to eight dollars a sheet depending on where you buy it. It's a big sheet, like 30 by 40, 25 by 40 sheet. It's huge. However, it was our favorite paper for making books for a very long time. And all of a sudden, we bought 100 sheets to teach a class and every mark we made, the ink bled. It just spread out and it was ugly, okay? And we're all looking at each other going, I don't know what I did wrong. Well, we didn't do anything wrong except buy paper from a manufacturer who decided not to finish the paper the way they used to, okay? They've since fixed it because they got enough complaints. But don't blame yourself, okay? That's number one. Number two, practice, but don't be looking for a perfect A, Okay, you can do that for your whole life and never, never get there. What you want to do is, is find letters that are interesting and exciting and have some energy to them. And they don't have to be perfect. They don't even have to be traditional looking. Okay, so let's move on from there. Did anybody have trouble making any of these marks? Can you do them halfway well? It's hard. It, my challenge was getting the middle part to look kind of um, go, going yes. light, like lighter because it's hard to have to like go hard and then deliberately go light. Right. So, that's my challenge. so what you want to do is don't press as hard as you can. Press a little bit and then ease up so that you get the thinnest line you can make and then gradually press again. It's all about gra being gradual about it, and it's about having a, a pretty light touch. The other thing that I'll tell you is, if you just go straight down, that's gonna work too. These are very informal letters, and it's not gonna matter all that much, okay? So one of the things we try to do with brush letters is, kind of think in terms of no pressure for the upstroke and pressure for the downstroke, okay? Calligraphy is all about thicks and thins. So the way we can do that is to say, I'm gonna make an I, that's easy to do. I'm gonna make that into an H, there's going to be an upstroke that's very light, okay? And when I get up here, I'm going to put more pressure, okay? So pressure, no pressure, pressure. And you can practice that 
by just making some kind of mountains. Okay, so go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And then go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And I don't know if you noticed, what I do often is I come down and then I lift my brush off of the paper. And then I go back and I put my brush exactly where I want it and I come up and I stop there. Now that could be an R. That could be the beginning of an M or an N or an H, depending on what I do with it. So if I put my brush back here, I don't put it right at the tip because that'll give me kind of an awkward looking joint there. But I go back into, see where my pen is? It's not here, it's here. Let me make that a little, there, is that better? I don't put it here, I put it here. So I come here and down and you can see that made kind of a funny joint there. But if I come down, and then up and down, that's smoother. And you see sometimes on the upstrokes, my hand gets a little shaky. The joys of old age and arthritis in my thumb joint, but that's okay. Once you get moving, it works fine. Okay, so let's try an alphabet. Um, there's two ways to make an A. We can do an A by going around, down, up, down, up, okay? Up, down, up, and then down again. Yell at me if I'm going too fast. I'm originally from New York. <laughs> I have a tendency to move fast. No, I'm, is that, is that, I'm fine with the pace. I'm sorry, what was that? I said I'm fine with the pace you're going right now. Good with the That's, pace? Okay, yeah. good. Good. Um, so that would be an A. This would be an O. You could do an O like this. If you start, we never use lines for brush letters, but you could if you wanted to. But consider if that's the height of your letter, then to start an O in a more of a script way, you might start down below that line, come up a little bit, then come down, then come up and around like this. But if that's your O, this can also be your O. And if that's your O, then that's the basis of your A. It's also, if you make a longer line, that's the beginning of your B, because then B is going to come up, down, up a little bit. Oops. Oh. Mm, yeah, I just Problem? made a funny sound with my marker. <laughs> like, it did not what? like something. I just made a funny sound with my marker. It did not like what funny I just sound? did to it. Uh, sometimes they squeak on certain paper. Yeah. Like, ah, I don't want to do it that way. Okay. The other way to do a B would be a more of a script way. And you can make a little entry loop and then down. And then roll on up like that. When we do calligraphy, we talk about the ductus of a letter. Ductus is a Latin word that means um, the leader, basically. And so 
it's the, the direction that we lead the tool in. So for this O here, this would be my first stroke, number one, and that shows you the direction. And then if I kept going, that would all be one stroke. If I went back here and down, that would be my second stroke. For the A, this would be stroke one, and this would be stroke two. For the B, this would be stroke one, and then this would be stroke two. So if you look in a calligraphy book, you'll see those markings and those numbers, and that's the ductus. That shows you which stroke is done first, the order of things, and um, how, how things follow to complete the letter, okay? So we've got A and B. So C is basically an incomplete O, except we can drag it out a little further. Now, one of the things that we do with a brush marker that's a lot of fun is to make a, a mark that's kind of a flick. So you would put your, your brush down and flick it. Could you see what I did? The mushier your tip of your brush gets, the harder it is to do that. So with these brushes, they're gonna get a little mushy fairly fast. But you can get some stiffer brushes that have more spring and don't turn mushy as fast. And I'll write down the names of those for you. So at the top of the C, I wanna put a little flick. And we do that, if you look, I'm not pressing the whole, the whole brush down, right? Or I'd have a flick way bigger than my letter. That looks kind of weird. But if I put just a little bit of the tip down, I can get that. Did that work for everybody? I did want it's you to, have to press it too hard and put it all the yeah, way down. Not too hard. Not too hard. Just gently. That works better. Yeah. Very gently. Especially with these brushes. When you look for for brushes, if you go in a store and you want to buy a brush to do brush lettering with, you look for a brush that um, that has spring to it, so that when you when you press on it, I don't want to do that with the one I'm writing with. When you press on it, whoops, you can't see that, can you? When you press on it, it springs back really fast. This this brush doesn't do that anymore. I can press this way. And when I let go, it's kind of just soft on the end. So it's harder. See, this is the brush. Well, I got a flick, but it's not as good as the other one. Okay. So the one thing you never want to do with your good brush for calligraphy is don't let the children or grandchildren color with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they put a lot of pressure on a brush and then you're done for. Okay. The D is just like the A. So up, down, up. Doesn't have to be really complete there because then we're gonna come up here, press, a little less pressure, pressure. And that's our D. And then for the E, the E starts going up first. So we're gonna start about the middle maybe a touch above the middle, and we're gonna go up and then come down with a little more pressure. Oops. Sorry. Um, so that's our E. Um, the other way to make an E is to do like you're doing a C and then put a line across and then put a little flick at the top. See, and that's already a very clunky flick there. Try that again. As soon as it gets soft, all bets are off. Okay, F 
up, down, stop, and cross it. Just with the very tip of your brush for crossing so that you get the thinnest line you can get. G is going to look like the A, right? Up, down, up, and then pressure, less pressure, pressure. And now here you want to let up and come up. See, and I couldn't let up enough there, so I'll try that again. That's better. And then you can take the G this way if you want to give it some more ability to connect to the less next letter. Like if the next letter were an E, I could start here, come down this way, and then I could put a T here. So that's how you would begin to connect letters. But brush letters are so informal that you don't have to connect them necessarily. Okay, H we did, but let's do another. Um, press, less pressing, more pressing. And then up and down. I won't do another I because we did a bunch of those. J, press. Less pressure, pressure. You could stop right there. And I think that's a pretty classy looking J. And just put a little flick at the top. Or you could take your J down and let up and let it work just like the bottom of the G almost. And it gets a flick. So I was saying earlier um, that when I was just talking with Rhonda and, and Vicky, that the history of calligraphy is almost totally connected to the history of books. And so it's very appropriate for this class to be um, uh, provided by the library. And if you go back in the Middle Ages and even way, way further back, almost all the calligraphy you find will be in books. Sometimes it's chiseled in stone on walls, like, you know, on the Roman, the Roman columns and monuments, but um, most calligraphy is in books. And um, because we use a Latin alphabet, sometimes there are letters that we don't have. There are no J's in the Latin alphabet. Um, because there were I's, and the I and the J were the same letter, and um, there were no K's. K's were Greek, but not Roman. And so when you look at certain alphabets, it's hard to find some letters, and we make them up um, to fit the kind of lettering that we're using. And so K was not originally a Roman letter, but if you do a K, you're going to do pressure, less pressure, pressure. And then here to make this diagonal, you're going to do some pressure and less. So you get a line like that. That's not a flick. That's a much more controlled, controlled line. Okay. And then remember, we said you want to mostly point the brush at the line you want to make. So we don't want to do this to do the next leg of the K, what we want to do is turn your hand so that you're pointing the brush at the line you want to make, and then use less pressure and more pressure. Does that make sense? Yes. And can Good. I note that we were thinking about providing everybody with a hammer and chisel and some stone to try <laughs> The logistics were just not there. Yeah, and, and it's really, really heavy to transport. Yes. I we did, a, we did a class in stone carving with, with this teacher of ours, and um, 
we ordered the stone. It was um, soapstone that came from Tennessee. And oh my goodness, it was really difficult, the logistics, because everybody had to have a stone. And so the delivery, the stones came on a pallet and a lady who had a basically a forklift on her farm was able to deliver them all to San Antonio for us. I mean, it was, it was, it was just a nightmare. But then instead of um, a hammer and chisel, we used Dremels and electric um, saws and things. And um, we had a really good time. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that next year. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Okay, so there's the K. I'll make another K for you so because I know that that's a trickier letter. So you're going to point this way down. And then we're going to point this way at the line we want to make, put pressure and, and less pressure. And then we're going to turn your hand. You can't see it, but my elbow is sticking out like as if I wanted to do the chicken dance, OK? And I'm going to put my brush here. And with less pressure, I'm going to add pressure as I go down, OK? Now the L is pretty straightforward. It's like a long eye. If you wanted to do a more script looking L, you could do this. And when you get down here, turn so that you're using the tip of your brush so that you can come up. OK. We kind of did M's and N's earlier, but let's do that again. You can do an M, come down, and up gently, very gently, and then down, and then do the same thing, very gently, and then down. And then to do an N, down, up, down. That's a cute sound. Sorry, I turned that off. <laughs> okay, we did O's, right? We don't need to do another O. Well, we'll do one just for completeness sake. Down, up, down, up. And I like to just stop there. I'm not I'm not too into the curly cues. Graceful is not really me, but <laughs> but I think that's a pretty good O just like that. Okay, let's do a P. So P is going to be the opposite of B, sort of. So we're going to come up here and put the what we call the bowl of the letter at the top instead of at the bottom. Q is just like the G, except we go up, down, up the G and the A, but then we come down and either just stop or put a little flick up at the tip. Then the R. And it's like you're making an N, but you get to the top and you stop. Say, nope, not an N, an R. And then you put a little flick there, and that's a very clunky, clunky one that I just made. So that's a lot better. I know um, instructors who scratch out all their bad letters if they're going to be recorded or whatever. So nobody will see that they ever made a bad one. But you need to know that. We all make less than perfect letters, and that's OK. OK, there's another way to make an R, which is more script. OK, so you come up with a light touch, make your little loop. And I like to stop there so I get control, and then come down this way, and then up. So that's more of a cursive R. OK. 
okay. S can be a little tricky because of this brush. So there's two ways to do S. You can do this way and then put a little pressure and you see I am pointing this way and then come up and put a little thick there. Sometimes it's easier to do an S that just does this. You can put a little flick there or you can do a more cursive S that kind of matches that R and come up, down, up this way. Okay. And then we can do a T and just cross it very lightly. You could also do the T like we did the L so that it comes up so that it would connect to the next letter. And then a U is like an upside down N. If you look at our U, our N, we're going to do the U, we're going to come down, up, down. And if you turn that upside down, we have an N. Okay. Go back here. The V, point your pen at the line you want to make. The line's this way. So once again, we're doing that chicken wing thing with our elbow. So we come this way and then up. And then W, we could make two of these a little narrower than the V itself. Or we could do a double U. which upside down looks like an M. Again, in Latin, there were no W's or U's. There was a V. And the V had what we consider a, a W sound, like a W or a U in some cases. So in the word um, quid was Q-U, and, and, but it was written it was written like this because the V has the sound of a U. Okay, W, X. Again, point your brush at the line. And then we don't like to cross two thicks, that gets kind of clunky looking. So what we prefer to do is point this one at the line and then this one, you can come up so that it's thinner there or you can just use the tip and let it be a little heavier there. I prefer this one. And I'm going to circle back right over there. Okay. Okay. And then Y, same thing. You can do this, just like we did with the V, and, and just do a light line this way. Or you could do a Y, like a U, but then with the bottom, like a G. One of my favorite Y's is from an older alphabet. 
it does this. I think that's just a very cool looking Y. It's basically a V with an extra leg. And then Z, we're going to go across lightly and then get some weight on this diagonal and then come across lightly again. On a Z, you want, you want this part here to stick out a bit. It's not even. So if you did this, 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 these are equal, right? But that Z looks like it's going to fall over. So a Z has to be like this and then come out further at the bottom than at the top so that it, you know for sure it's, it's got a base to stand on. And of course, the other way to do a Z is to do it more as a script letter like this. It's kind of like making a three that's long and then it's got the bottom like the G. That was very clunky. Let me do that again. The map's too big, so. There we go. Third time's the charm. That's a decent, a decent Z. Okay. And then because you may want to be addressing your cards, let's just quickly do a row of numbers. So the one you have a little light upstroke and then down. The two is going to go up lightly, come around with more pressure and go across. You could put a little flick on the two. The three, kind of just like we just did the Z. Threes often dip down below the line. They don't have to. But I like them better when they do. Four. Five. Five often dips below the line as well. Six often, because six, if you do it this way within the space of the others, it starts looking a little smallish. If you do six, above the, the top line. Sometimes that's prettier. And it's less clunky. Sometimes if you don't close it all the way. Seven. Depending on how you like your sevens, I like to cross them. It avoids confusion with the one. Eight. Eight is funny. It's like making a wide S and then come back to the top and finish it. The other way you could do an S would be to do a circle at the top and a circle at the bottom. Both of those work okay. And the nine is kind of like the six. You start here, go up, down, up, and then around. Over. And often the nine dips below, so it's a little bigger here. And it'll dip down below there. And then the zero, kind of like the O. Okay. Are we good with that? I think I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> I, think, I think my numbers are a lot worse than my letters and I can't figure out well, why. 
The thing about these letters. I have to learn how to do. Again, time on task, right? Practice, practice, practice. But the other thing that you can do is now letters in a vacuum are meaningless, right? We need words. So sometimes to practice, I would just sit and take dictation off the TV, you know, and write whatever I'm hearing. Cause it's like, I don't know what to write, but you know, you can always do that. Or you can write numbers like one, What I found what works for me is thinking of light as a feather, right? Like yes. if I have a light, if you, if you're deliberately light handed, then your lines are going to come out a little bit thinner. When you have a harder hand, it kind of comes out thicker. That's just what exactly. I Exactly. You're, you're exactly right. And now let me show you something else. I've only been using this brush as long as we've been in class, right? So an hour, less than an hour. Now let me show you this other brush that I have. Uh, this one. Watch the difference when I write this word. This is a finer brush. I've had it for years and it's not mushy yet. I'm be betting that your brushes already feel a little mushy on the tip. So you need an extremely light hand. It's good, it's, it's a good practice for you to have a light touch. But this makes all the difference in the world. If I wanna write, look at the nice mark I can get. pretty easily, okay? This brush is called the Pentel Touch, or you'll also see it called the Pentel Sign Brush or Sign Painter's Brush. It'll say all those different things. They're available on Amazon for like three and a half dollars, close to four or something like that. They come in a million different colors. Um, and you can also get them from where we get a lot of our supplies, which is John Neal. I think it's johnneal.com, John Neal. Seller.com. Let me double check. Uh, John Neal Books. Dot com. And they sell, it's very hard to buy calligraphy supplies locally. Um, but these brush markers, these Pentel brush markers, you can get on Amazon, but you can also get them from John Neal. Okay. Um, should we, I want to switch. Let me, let me show you just a couple of alternative forms um, for some of these letters. Instead of making our A, like this, we can point the brush this way, do this, and then turn and do this. And that's a cool looking A. To do the M and N very often, see this brush is already mushy. We do this so that we get a little Just a little um, variety in the letters. Let's see if I can find something to show you. Oh, there are words here. It's something that says pointed brush lettering. Oh, 
okay, see the different form in that G, how it curves around and then up. So there's a lot of different things you can do with these. <clears throat> if you're interested in calligraphy, I would very much recommend this book. It's the Speedball textbook. Every year, Speedball puts out a book. This is the 24th edition, but I'll write this down. Speedball textbook. Oops. And um, that's a really good, it's got all different kinds of lettering in it. And I think you'd enjoy that. Okay, what I wanna do now is switch over to our decorated letters so that we have time for that. And then, um, and then if we have time, I'll go back and do some capital letters. Leslie, really quick, that was Don Neal, that's J-O-N-H or J-O-H-N. -J oh my God, I wrote it backwards, thank you. No, uh, one of our patrons asked that. Great question. Very good question. John Neal books.com. Okay. Excuse me one sec. Try some capital letters and I'll be right back. Does everyone feel like they're uh, they're starting to get it? I forgot that we hadn't done the capitals yet, and I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> it's exciting. I'm I'm really liking this. Just so everyone knows, I have already marked all over my desktop as well. <laughs> Why contain yourself to the paper when you can expand? Exactly. <laughs> Now, this is really great. I've really enjoyed it so far. She's good at explaining every step. You know what, Virginia? I have a heavy hand too when I write, so I press down really hard. So this whole, it's an exercise in restraint. It really is. Yeah. Also, but I think it's good. A reminder, um, I know she was talking about that, that one book, but we do have some calligraphy books at the library. So if you decide you like this and you want some more ideas or some books to give more tips and stuff, we do have calligraphy books you can check out from the library. I find it fascinating that people um, doodle when, you know, they're watching TV, because I, I didn't, I mean, I'm always on my phone, so I guess it's like a tech thing, like a tech problem that I have like I'm I do dual screens so the thought of having just a pencil and pen and just you know being artistic in any kind of way I, I don't know when I lost that <laughs> like when did that happen probably when you got a smartphone Vicky okay I'm so sorry I'm back and I have an oven yay yay Leslie that's a good thing that's definitely a good thing did you try some capital letters Yes. Anybody? Okay, so let me just very, very quickly do this. If I were to do capitals, I would say up, down, oh, Leslie, we across. can't see what you're doing, Leslie. Whoops. Whoops. Oh, there you go. Can you redo that? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I just hit something oh, weird. It's very artistic. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. This is, this is a new um, presenter, and um, if you grab, the, grab it to move it, you got to be careful not to touch the buttons on the front, and I'm not used to that yet, so sorry about that. That was really weird. Okay, what I did was up, down, cross. The other way I like to do A's is down, down, and cross that way from the bottom up. You do a B down and then just 
kind of use a lighter touch to come around on these because it's harder, right? The C will be the same as before. The D, these are not going to be, you know, rocket science here. Because they're so informal, but see, this pen is too chunky. Let me see if this one's better. This one's worse, even. I'm going to demo with this one. I know you don't have this one, and I'm sorry, but I can make you better letters this way. The E, you can do like a C or like you're used to seeing an E. You can do it like this or when you get the end, you can put a little pressure there. I think that's, that's enough capitals, okay? So I want to really do the decorated letters. And I think that'll be more fun. Okay. Using just pencil and paper. Let's, you have your handout with the Lombardic bristles on it. The decorated letter handout. Did you all see that one? I think the letter I want to do, let's start with an H so that um, we can write happy holidays or something. So when we do these decorated letters, the H is done, you draw it, right? So that this, this would be our I. Okay. Um, and if we wanted to make an H, we would do it longer with a little bit of a bow in the middle, put our top on it and put a bottom on it. Those are serifs that stick out. And then take our H and do this. Like a fish hook. And then put what we call an earmuff on it. <laughs> Good for today's weather, right? Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Now, here's something these brushes are really good for. Color it in. So we're going to take this brush and just color, color in the heaviest parts. But then use the other end of your brush, this finer tip marker and do this. And we're doing this on scrap paper, right? This is learning. We call this workshop life. So it may not be perfect. Be surprising if it is, but that's okay. This is how we learn. Okay, so there's an H. Everybody good with that? Kind of, sort of? Kind of, sort of. Okay, kind of, sort of. Oh, it looks quite pretty, even if mine's a little bit ugly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make it pretty. I promise. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we want to do is draw a moat around this letter. In the Middle Ages, the monks that were making these gorgeous books were using wet paint and they needed to keep on going. They couldn't stop and wait for paint to dry. My mother used to call and say, what are you doing? And I'd say, watching paint dry. You know, <laughs> you know they didn't have time for that. So what they did was they outlined the letter and never touched the wet paint. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Leave a little bit of white and go all the way around wherever there's a part of a letter. Okay. 
when you get here, remember this line here is part of your letter. So you still have to come around like this, right? If your letter had a closed in space, like B, then when you outline your letter, you would also outline in here in what we call the counter spaces, okay? The closed in spaces of the letter. So your letter would look like this, right? If it's a B. I'm being very sloppy about this, but just to show you. Okay, this is called the counter space. Okay, so all those spaces have to be outlined. So let's go back to our H. Now that we have our letter and a moat, the next thing we wanna do is draw a box around the letter. So we go like this. We'd like the box to not be outside the letter entirely, but to enclose it. And I like the box to have a little bit of curve on those lines that gives it a little more grace. So we might draw the box like this. Okay. And now because we have double lines everywhere else, we want to put a double line. So inside the box, we add that extra line. only where there's a single line. Okay, everybody with me? Um, yes. Okay, now comes the really fun part. <laughs> we can have all different kinds of shapes, right? If we have a square or a rectangle, we can put just a little scallop inside. My mother used to make birds like that. Lots of birds in the sky. She'd say, here's the birds flying. Okay, so you make little birds like that. One on each side. And now we've got a flower. Okay. If we have a long rectangle, we could maybe put a river inside it that touches the edges. Okay. If we have a fat rectangle, I shouldn't say it that way, a wide rectangle. We can go this way. And we can put, we can put a tree. Olive trees were often depicted like this, with the branches coming at the same point on both sides and then put a leaf. Super glad you encouraged us to bring erasers, Leslie. <laughs> Listen, you know, <laughs> what we say in, in calligraphy and calligraphic art is fix it or feature it. Oh, nice. If it, <laughs> fine, if you can't, you make it into something that says, I really, really, really meant to do this. <laughs> that's <laughs> great. I like that. I think okay. that's a good, theme, a good thing for life. 
<laughs> right. I'm yes. glad I have a good pencil and I'm working on a, just a piece of paper here. Well, you know, honestly, that's why we're working on paper first so that you don't use your cards <laughs> up right, right this minute. But here's, here's a wider rectangle in the other direction and we can do, sometimes we call these golf clubs and they can be straight or wavy. And you do the next one going this way, and the next one going this way, and the next one going this way, and the next one going this way. So you end up with something that looks very organic, like something that grows, you know, but very stylized, right? That's one thing you can do. Another one of these longer ones. The guy who taught us, he said he calls it intestines. And it kind of grossed us out a little bit, but you can go like this and like this and like this and like this. And then over here, you come this way. So you come inside that part. Kind of looks like sausage, right? That's another thing that you can do. Okay. And sometimes if you have a rounder space, like inside some of these counter spaces, you can do a kind of spirally design. Something like that. And then these can have leaves or they can have dots. Oftentimes when, the, when there are dots, they're done in threes, which in the Middle Ages was just a representation of the Trinity. But I like odd numbers, so whatever it means to you is perfectly fine. So let's go back to our H and decide what goes here and here. Ugh. Look at me. This is why I never oh, use no. brush markers with, I forgot to put the cap on this end, see. Okay. I just tried so to let's, tap on my pencil. It's like, how do you know what I do? I'm a calligrapher, I'm covered in ink. <laughs> go to meet somebody we go I'll be the one with the ink on my hands okay so let's start here what we could do is um, do our little golf club things here right here oh no my space is too big okay it's too big, that's yeah. no problem. Listen, listen, if your space is big, here's a bigger space. You can put a line down the middle like this and make it into two spaces, okay? Mm. And then you do whatever you want with it. You could even make a big space into four spaces. Mm. Anything you like. This is how the monks doodled, honestly. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, it, it drives me absolutely crazy that, you know, there's this whole system of Zen tangles. I probably shouldn't say this on a recording, but it's honestly how I feel. The Zen tangles system has been copyrighted, but it's just kind of a formalized version of doodling. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with doodling in your own way in these, you don't have to do medieval style doodles. You can do your own, okay? You could decide I like a zebra pattern and do something like this. And you could decide I just want a bunch of berries in here. And I want this one to be squigglies and this one to go the other way. 
And that looks just as cool as what the monks did. Okay, so whatever size your space, divide it up if you need to. Now, once we've got that, we have options. And what we usually do is color this in. Watching the clock, oh, we're good still. So we can color this in usually in the same color that we used to draw our lines so that the lines then kind of disappear. And these markers are good for this. And um, they have nice ink that doesn't bleed, which is also good. I tested a marker last night and it was leaking. And I'm using 24 pound computer paper and that marker that leaked went through one drop that got on there, went through four sheets of paper. Wow. It's amazing. Okay, so inside this space, I think it would be fun to have some sort of spirally line. So I'm going to do this just a little bit. that. We'll come back to that in a minute. And then over here, what would you like? An olive tree or a river? A river. So let's do a river. A nice meandering river. Like that. And if you like it better, just straight you know, down the middle, like I did over here, you could do that too. Okay, so now the space around the river, I'm gonna fill in this way. Now, if you have colored pencils or something, you know, you could change these. And if we have time in the end, I'll show you what I do with different colors on these. But I would encourage you to check out the library's supply of books about what we call illuminated letters. Um, I -L -L in the Middle Ages, there were lots and lots of these letters and they were called illuminated because the goal was to light up the word of God and they were mostly in Bibles. Um, and they used a lot of gold to make the letter body itself. Um, but they also put little paintings inside the letters often because, this is stupid, use the brush, because they wanted to, um, tell the story of what the chapter was about because a lot of the people looking at these things didn't read. And so they could follow along in the text by seeing the picture. Okay, is everybody this far? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you have um, a gold gel pen, right? Yes. Okay, so let's get out the gold gel pen and let me see. Okay, this one's dead. That's why I took out more than one. Hmm. This one's close to dead. Okay. Um, with your gold gel pen, you can usually write right on top of this ink. Oh, and Leslie, I think you're in black and white on your um, formatter, oh, so we can't see the gold. Excuse me, whoops. Let's see. Yes. That's working? Okay. Yeah. So 
this is this pen in particular is not showing up great on here but you see you can put some very pretty gold dots on there you could put a gold diamond in the middle of the H. I'm seeing this a little bit better than it's showing up. It's my light. Isn't that a little bit better? I can see it. You could, yeah, okay. And you can put gold leaves on these guys. Okay. So whatever you're in the mood for, you don't have to have those particular decorations. And then take your, you have a red pen as well? Yes. Okay. So the red makes berries. One, two, three, one, two. Like I said, usually in groups of three, but sometimes just loose ones. Okay. And then Put that pen away for a sec and go back to the, the black one. In the corners of these, you want to, from the corner, let me show you here first. You don't want something to stick out from the corner. You want it to come out like this so that it's a smoother, transition. Do you see the difference? You want this to come like this. Maybe you would smooth that out a little bit. You don't want it to just stick out. Okay. So over here, we're going to extend that little curve a little bit. Put a leaf. Put a couple more things here. There's two kinds of leaves we can make. Well, there's a lot of leaves. If you're a gardener, you know a zillion more leaves than I know. Um, but you can make a leaf that looks like this. You can make one that looks more like an upside down heart. And then one of the most popular leaves was the acanthus leaf, A C A. N T H U S. The acanthus leaf was looked like this. You have this stem, and then you're gonna go one, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So that's the shape is one, two, three, four. I have to always, I've been doing this for years and I always have to count out one, two, three, four to get all three of these to look right to me. And then there was a little squiggle on the coming off of the end of each of these. Okay, so we can put one, a campus leaf over here maybe, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like that. Okay, let's stop with that one. Over here, let's put an A campus going this way. One, two, three, four, one, two. Three, I don't know four. how I'm intimidated by a leaf, Leslie. <laughs> What's that? I said, I don't know how I'm intimidated by a leaf, but I, yeah. A leaf? Okay. Yeah, I was like, don't well, the H I just made. Yeah, okay. This is something very stylized. You can take that acanthus leaf 
and you could make it do triangles or diamonds, I should say. That looks just as good. And you don't have to do those. You could just do a leaf like this one or this one. Okay, if you say so, I'm going to practice a little bit more before I ruin my H. Well, you, <laughs> this, again, we're on plain paper. This you're is right, your card. You're right. Oh my okay. God, I'm doing great it's for not practice. Your card, all right? When you feel comfortable, <laughs> you put these on your card. Okay, so from here, let's do this. That gives us a little, I don't know, a little tendril sticking out. And maybe from here, one of these leaves. Okay. And over here, let's do one of these. And another one of these, maybe. And I don't know, maybe like that. And over here, we'll do. Um, one, two, three, four. We'll do another acanthus just for practice. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's enough. Okay. So something like that is where we are. You don't have to have that exactly. And um, whatever, whatever you like the look of is fine. But now take your gold pen back and you can color in these leaves. And if you'd rather, you could always just draw the stems in black and do the leaves in pure gold without the black lining, the outline on them. So this is starting to look pretty complicated, right? <laughs> But it's just one step at a time. And rather than put your hand in the gold gel pen ink like I just did, turn your page so that you don't have your hand in wet ink. That's always the issue for calligraphers. And then I like for these little ends to be gold rather than black because I think that's prettier. So we draw these little tendrils in gold. Okay, how are we doing? Fantastic. That's good. I kind of feel like we need more, like maybe some gold dots inside our golf clubs. Like that. Okay. And then the other thing that was done with these letters is, especially in the, um, the Celtic lettering, there were red dots. They had a thing for red dots and I have to agree with them. It's a very cool thing to do. So what they did was they outlined this entire box with red dots. And boy, does it liven it up. And I'm not going dot, 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 like that. I'm making fairies. Okay, like that. See the difference? These won't show up. These will. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all around, and if a little part sticks out, you follow that line. And when you get to the corner, you can go right to there and back in, and then around. And I just noticed a little corner inside the H that we forgot to do. So we'll do that in a minute.
So again, I would encourage you to check the library's collection of books about medieval calligraphy, um, books about what they call illuminated manuscripts. The John Neal books dot com site that I gave you. He sells lots and lots of beautiful books about illumination if you're really into this and you want to buy one. And I've seen a, a number of them on Amazon, but I think that John Neal has a better selection. And I like to put some bigger ones on some of these. See up here and maybe over here. One, two, three. I'm gonna erase this eye so it's not in the way of our. Okay. Okay, so that's that's a decently decorated letter, right? What I forgot to do is this little corner here, y'all see this? That's empty and that's not good. So let's do one of our little birds here like this and like this, just to fill that space and leave it decorated a little more. Okay, so then what I was thinking, I kind of messed this page up a little. I'm sorry, I didn't write it in, but if you did this and then you took your brush pen on your card and you wrote What are we hearing? Thank you. you did something like that, this H works for both happy and holidays. Whoa. Okay. Which is always fun. Would you like to do an M and a C so you can do Merry Christmas and an N and a Y so you can do Happy New Year? It's 1130. So we've got time for another letter. Or you could work on your card, but I'm thinking you might want to practice these a little and do your cards on your own. Yes. Does that sound better? Okay. Yes. So let's try um, let's try another letter. Let's try an M. Okay. Lombardic M's are really weird. There's, I don't even remember what's on there, um, but they go like this. And like this, like this, sort of two ovals. And then you connect here. And there's usually a base. I made that too wide, so I'll just do this. I'll make things match a little better. So the M looks something like this. Is that what you have on your handout? I didn't get a handout. It was attached in the email I sent on Thursday. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay, whatever. This is a good M. There's a, a kind of lettering called Unchil, U-N-C-I-A-L. Unchil, um, is a form of lettering that was around in the uh, ninth, 10th, 11th centuries. Okay, so pretty old. The cool thing about Unchil is that it only had capitals, no lowercase letters. So Unchil was written like this, U N C I. Oh, the A goes 
kind of goes like this. And the L had a little bit of a, what we call an A center, taller L. Okay, and the, un the uncial M looked like this. Occasionally you see it done like this. So this is a nice, a nice M. Okay, so let's do that. And let's, um, let's ink it in. So you would come like this. And like I said, you know, I, I always do these in pencil first. And I get them looking like I want them to look. You got to give it a minute for things to dry because these inks don't all dry really fast. And then erase any extra pencil marks that you have. Okay. And then take the other end of your brush and fill this in. Of course, you could fill this in in gold as well. I have a gold letter. I should never be trusted with ink. It's all over me. <laughs> anyway, so usually there's like a little bit of a ball on the end. Okay. So there's a, a decent M. And then what's the next thing we do? The box drawing? We draw, we draw a moat around the letter. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go around I always like my hand works better if I pull toward me so I just turn my paper however I need to do it. If you're left-handed these decorated letters are fine the brush letters I should have said that at the beginning. You turn the paper so that it's easier for you to make the mark you want. Okay, there's a moat. Is that moat complete? No, <laughs> I didn't do counter spaces, right? So I have to do the counter spaces. These counter spaces are basically ovals. Okay, kind of looks like um, some sort of anime character. You can see it with this as an eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> and a little nose. <laughs> okay. Think of like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's the M. Now it needs a box. So let's draw the box like this. Like this. Like this. And now the box has to have a double line wherever there isn't one. Okay. Are we good with that? Yes. Sitting there. Okay. okay. Now, I think let's do this kind of simply. Let's put a, a line here and a line here. And then we can do our little bird. Scallop marks here, here, and here, and fill in those spaces. Okay. 
and do the same thing here. Do the same thing on this side. Okay. And then I think this needs something kind of growing like this. Just occurred to me you might want to put it. Um, no, I think let's just do this that way. Let's let this one go this way. Okay, let's stop there and then use our gold pen and put a gold dot in the middle of each of these flowers. And then let's put some gold leaves. Okay. Are we good? And then take our red pen and put some berries in here. One, two, three. You can put some extras here and there. Do the same here. Okay. And then another thing that the monks did was they drew what we like to call put lights around the letter, around this box, and they would go like this. You can call them foot lights, you can call them omegas, because it looks like, you know, the letter omega. Instead of the red dots. And do this going the other way. Do it the other way on the bottom just just in case. Um, instead of coming out, you can go in and then this looks like a postage stamp. <laughs> And you would go around the whole thing going this way, right? And then if you wanted, you could still put some leaves in the corners. So y'all good with that? I'm catching up. <laughs> taking me longer to make those than it's taking you. <laughs> I've made a few. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you like me to show you um, uh, one that I did in gold recently? If I can find the picture of it. Yes. Sure. While you work on that, because these, you know, these ones we're doing right now are kind of um, sketches. I'm gonna stop sharing for a sec. And then I'm going to share again, but with my other stuff, basic. Whoops, that wasn't right. Uh, what I want is this. 
Oh, oh there it is, right there. Wow. Okay. So, um, this is something I, I put on a card for a friend. Um, and you can see these look very complicated, but you know now that they're not, right? Um, this is a bee with just a spiral inside the counter spaces and red dots all over. I didn't put any dots or anything around the edges because I had this border. But the gold letters are real gold. Uh, um, you lay a base and put gold leaf on top of them. So all the gold that you see is real 24 karat gold. But you can do that with a gel pen um, and it comes out very, very pretty. It looks like um, the designs within the gold, is that done with the pen? Yes, it's done with a stylus. You know, you could do the same thing with a, with a, a dead ballpoint pen or something, you know. Um, but <clears throat> a stylus, like, um, I'll show it to you in a sec, but um, so the stylus pushes pushes into the gold on the base because the gold is raised, but it could be solid. Um, I recently did one, let me see if I can find that recent. Oops, that's not what we want. Somebody else's lecture that I can't share. Ah, uh, here. So this one has no decoration on the gold itself. It's just plain. Okay, but see, I used watercolor to paint in the greens and the turquoise and the blue. Mm -hmm. And um, these are actually red. It didn't show up red in this photo that I took for some reason. You know, they show up a little more red on this one. Mm -hmm. I hadn't yet erased and stuff on here and touched up, but... Um, so you can do that, right? You guys can do this easily. And um, you can use, I'll go back, back here. You could use um, colored pencils. You could use watercolors. You could use other markers. This is the stylus that I used. And even sometimes in paint, it depends. Um, where's my zoom? And we had a quick question. What it was, what is the name? It's the Calligraphers Guild. Yes, I will write. See, look, this is on uh, on paint, on the on just the gel pen. Uh -huh. Okay, you could do that. You have to put it on a cushioned surface. I'm on a stack of paper. If it's on a hard surface, it won't work very well. Let me write that for you right now. Uh, Antonio. It's very long. Calligraphy.com. There you go. We have a website. Um, on the website, you can join. Um, our dues are $25 a year. You can pay on PayPal. I mean, that's barely $2 a month. We meet every month except July. Uh, we've been meeting on Zoom for over a year and a half. So, um, you know, it's kind of nice. We have a member in Alberta, Canada. We have um, members in Austin, in Leander. We have a member in Port Aransas. We have one in Tulsa who spends half her time in New Jersey, um, one in Maryland. So, you know, it's really nice that um, we have a, a nice group of, of people. We have 
about 80 ish members right now, I think. And you do not have to be any kind of accomplished calligrapher whatsoever. All you have to have is an interest. And so um, we welcome everybody. And if you would, would like to join or you want more information, um, you can get in touch with me personally if you want, L.S. Winokur at Gmail. Or um, you can go to the Guild. Our president is Laura Harold, and um, she's super energetic and wonderful and exciting to have as a president. And, um, and we have, um, the first Thursday is our general meeting. There's a short business meeting, and then um, usually there's a program. And the program is a lecture. Usually when we met in person, some of the programs were hands-on, but we've still done some hands-on things by delivering packets of supplies to people or just sending out a supply list and you pick up your own supplies and then work along with the instructor like we did today. Um, on the third Thursday, we have a mini workshop. You can, there's one, there are eight of them in the year. And um, right now on Zoom, they're, they used to be $5 a piece. So that would be $40 for the year. Now they're $20 for the year. And it's all or none. You sign up for the mini workshops, you get all, all eight, whether you show up or not, but they're recorded. So you can always see the recording on our YouTube channel. And, and for those what we've been- you, um, I'm sorry, Leslie. And for those of you who are, uh, are practicing right now and can't write all this information down, we can send out an email um, that has all this information with Leslie's contact information too. Great, that's perfect. Um, and, I'll just bring up real quick. Well, it'll, it takes just a little while to get our recording onto the YouTube channel because we have to have, have it, you know, okayed by everybody. Um, right. So I'll send out an email that has that link and all this information in about a week or so. Great. Great. Thank you so much. So anyway, any other questions? None? Okay. I was going to say one other thing. Since we are Zooming this last year and a half and not meeting in person, we can't bring stuff to a meeting and say, look what I did, you know, look what I made or look what so-and-so sent me. So um, on the second Thursday of, of the month, we've been doing a show and share, not every single month, but most months. And people just send me pictures of what they've been working on and then I show them for everybody and everybody gets to see and they get to tell us how, how they did it or what their problems were or whatever. So it's great what we call eye candy, you know, wonderful stuff to look at and um, it's inspiring and it's fun. And um, so I encourage you to come and join and um, if you're interested, you know, and, and see what you think. So I thank you all for coming today because I know weekends before the holidays are difficult. But um, you've got four cards each. You've got pens, you've got brushes. You can get better brushes if you want to, because I know your brushes are probably already a little mushy on the end today. Um, and then, um, you know, have some fun. And um, if you want to send me pictures of what you did, I'd love to see it. We did have one other question. What time are the meetings? Oh, I'm sorry. I should have said that. The meeting is at 7 p.m., 7 to 9 on Thursday evenings. So a lot of our members have said, yay, Zoom. I don't have to get in traffic and drive down to Christ Episcopal Church. You know, I don't have to fight spurs traffic. Um, I don't have to fight bad weather. And I personally am thrilled that I right now don't have to halt my computer, the, the document camera, the screen, all the rest of it. And what everybody says, and I'm sure you guys are aware today, you get better than a front row seat when we're on Zoom. Very so true. it's really nice. Well, thank it's you very so nice. much once again, Leslie, for taking time out of your day to, to show us. Oh, my pleasure.